Now, why won't this car run right? That's what we're gonna be trying to figure out today. So what is going on, you guys? And welcome back to the channel. Now, while the STI may start and it may idle, it's not running properly. AFRs at idle are 18 plus, which are no bueno, not good. Now we need to figure out why, and the clicking noise, we need to figure that out also. Um, but I think I may have found the clicking noise, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I posted up on the community tab about what I think might be the clicking noise. And we'll get to that here in a second. But I got an email back from Chris, the tuner who's gonna be tuning the car. Apparently the barometric pressure sensors are actually in the ECU on these older 2.5 turbos or older STIs and WRXs in general. So the barometric pressure sensor, we didn't actually remove it and disable anything. So the fact that we're getting a bad code for the barometric pressure sensor can be a little bit confusing at this point because we don't know what's going on. Chris thinks that it's the map sensor. So I've gone ahead and I've ordered a new map sensor for the car. I ordered the Cobb four bar map sensor versus running that Omni four bar map sensor. Apparently the Omni sensors are iffy at best. They're iffy at best. So hopefully this Cobb four bar map sensor kind of corrects things, but I am gonna get a data log uh, pulled today. So that way we can actually send it over to Chris to see what he's seeing. But I mentioned I may have found the ticking noise. So I've already got replacements ordered for these, but I think it may have been a coil pack, which one of you guys actually suggested, and this is why I checked them. But on this coil pack, this was on the driver's side head. This is cylinder number four. This could mean that that was our ticking right there because that metal was a lot closer to this. And every time I would spring it back and forth and it tapped onto that, it sounded a lot like our ticking noise. So that could very well be what the ticking actually was. We're gonna find out today because I'm gonna kidnap two of these coil packs uh, from a car on the channel that you guys have never seen before. So this is who we call Mittens. Mittens is a 2005 Legacy GT. Mittens has a blown up engine. Mittens been blown up for a couple of months. Yes, Matt and I are working on figuring out a solution of what we wanna do with this car to get it back up and running again. But this uses the exact same coil packs as the 2005 STI so I can temporarily rob two of them out of this car to get this data log figured out and to see if the coil pack was our ticking noise. Now on top of just needing coil packs, I found something else. So on our map sensor right here, if I can zoom in on that wire right there, do you see that exposed copper right there? That could be creating a barometric pressure issue because if that wire isn't actually reading properly to that map sensor, that could be throwing off a lot of the parameters. And when you have a messed up map sensor, a lot of stuff can go wrong. So we're gonna start easy. We're gonna grab the coil packs out of mittens over there, throw them in this, get our charge pipe put back on, try correcting the map sensor the best we can. We're gonna try to repair that wire um, see if the car will idle any better. We're gonna get our idle log and then hopefully today the gaskets for the wing show up and I need to get that in. So we got a lot to do, but right now we're gonna focus on troubleshooting. Let's grab some coil packs. All right, hello mittens. It's been a while. I know it's good to see you. Wow, there's a lot of schmoo built up in there. I'll try to pull some of that out for you, my friend, but come on mittens. Just give me a coil pack. There's a there's a battery right in my way. And I don't wanna, there we go. Come on. I'll just take it. If you wanna cooperate here, I will just take it. Now to get that coil pack, or both coil packs in here now. Come on, there we go. Oh, it throws me through a loop every single time. So coil packs are both in, charge piping is put back on. Next up, I need to tackle this math situation right here to fix that damaged wire. Um, when I get the new Cobb four bar map sensor in, I'm just gonna lop part of that harness off and uh, tap on a new harness for the new map sensor. But for the time being, I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on that wire just to make sure it's getting a strong connection. Typically, whenever you're doing motor stuff, you don't wanna use solder. If you can avoid it, you wanna use crimps or connectors just because over time, the vibration on the solder will end up breaking and you'll lose connection on some things. So, uh, but temporarily, I'm just gonna get a little bit of solder on there. We'll clean that up a little bit. I'll throw some electrical tape on it and uh, hopefully that fixes our sensor issue. And then we'll get probably a seven minute idling log. I'll probably do a cold idle and a hot idle once it's at operating temperature, just so Chris can see both parameters of open loop versus closed loop uh, after the engine's actually warm. So far 
I hear no ticking. I legit hear no ticking. If it was a coil pack, I swear. We won't know till it gets up to operating temp, uh, but I am gonna start letting the access port data log a little bit, uh, just so we can get some logs for Chris. So I'm gonna let it data log for probably eight to 10 minutes. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hang out while it does this. Uh, AFRs haven't seemed to change too much. They're still starting to lean out on idle, but hey, we'll see what happens, you guys. I never would have guessed that the clicking would have been from a coil pack without you guys. Like honestly, everyone who guessed coil pack on the clicking, 50 points, 100 points, whatever team that you guys want to be on, kudos and cookie points, brownie points, whatever you want to call them, over to you guys. So the clicking um, was either this coil pack arcing or it was that piece of metal clicking on itself, um, which would make sense because as we rev the car up faster, since this is bolted to the engine, this clicking would get quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker um, as we would increase RPM. So, hey, if any of you guys have a weird clicking noise, a potential issue uh, could be coil packs. So like I said, I did snag a brand new set of OEM coil packs. Uh, I think it was about $400 for all four of them. It's not something that I wanted to buy, um, but if I'm replacing one, I'd rather just replace all four of them just so we know we have brand new known good coil packs in the car. These ones have about 100, well, they have 132,000 miles on them to my knowledge. Um, so it doesn't hurt to just swap them out at this point anyways. But I got some data logs uh, pulled on the access port. I need to pull those off and I need to send those over to Chris. Uh, one of the issues that we are having still, which is causing our idle to be all over the place, is code, what is that? P2227, which is barometric pressure sensor, which is weird because the bar, he said he's never seen a barometric pressure sensor failure on these older cars and it has to be, it, it just has to be map related at this point. I have no idea. So let me get these logs sent over to Chris. And then the next thing we need to work up is the intake track for right here. So one of the major issues with this one, if you guys are running a front mount intercooler, or at least this setup like I am, is that your track is gonna sit like that. Now that little port right there feeds into the fender where that old snorkel box used to be. So we need to like cut and like figure out a way, I'll probably cut it like that and then block this plate off or block that end off somehow. So that way all the air gets directed into the box. Um, so we need to work out a way to be able to make this thing to work. But first let me get these logs over to Chris and then we'll kind of go from there. So I'm kind of thinking like, cause we want it to feed air in up to there. So if we cut it, like that. And then we can put like a block off plate on that side. So I'm gonna write right here, this line. So I don't cut the wrong one. Cause that's the last thing that I want. And I'd rather start off by cutting off less than what we need than more than what we need. Because if I cut too much off then we're kind of like SOL on this. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Easily just bloop. All right. Now, this guy should, so he bolts on right about there. Next up, I need to, I need to cut off this face right there. So now we have an opening air to come out of. All right, here's what I'm thinking here. So we have this cut and trimmed to the point uh, where all we need to do is block off this back portion so that way the air gets directed out of this area that we cut. I did a little stencil here and it lines up almost perfect over that with a little bit of flexing. So I need to find a material that I can easily cut and kind of maneuver to make it fit on here. So. I'm gonna go hop on the computer for a little while, see what I can find locally, see if we can go grab something and uh, make this intake work. I'm also waiting on Subaru to give me a call for the gaskets for the wing. Uh, so we're gonna be on standby for a little bit. So, well, I'm not gonna play with it, but I'm gonna go find a material that'll work for what we're trying to do here. Woo, we are in the future now. So it's been a few hours. Uh, we swung down to Subaru, we grabbed the new gaskets for the wing. I'll link all the part numbers down below just because a lot of you guys wanted those. Uh, but before, and we uh, and I picked up the stuff to be able to do this intake track. My, my best idea that I could come up with 
was fiberglass. I've never worked with fiberglass before, so this will be a learning experience for me. I don't know how well it's gonna work, uh, but I got some fiberglass, I got some 80 grit sandpaper to be able to rough up the intake track a little bit. Uh, and then we also got this, if I can like get it out of the bag, this Bondo Fiberglass Resin Jelly, uh, Resinda de Fibra de Vidurio, I don't know. I don't know, I'm, I'm part Hispanic, but I can't speak Spanish, so don't don't judge me too much there. But uh, the we, we have a couple things we have to do in a specific order. So I need to clean up the rust on the trunk. A lot of you guys suggested getting that rust converter stuff. I forgot to get it at the auto parts store and I don't wanna go back. Call me lazy if you'd like. So I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna like sand off just the surface rust that I can, uh, get some touch up paint on there, let that dry. While that's drying, we're gonna go over and start doing the first like coat of resin and fiber glass on our intake track and then while that's drying we'll come back we'll knock out the clear coat for the trunk and then while that dries we'll go back to the intake do a second coat of resin and fiberglass and then we'll come back get the new gaskets on the wing there's a lot of stuff going on but let's start off by just cleaning up this trunk getting the rust off and getting the touch-up paint on there okay does it look perfect not by any means. No, not at all. It does not look like a, like a good paint job um, in the spots that I went and touched up, but the rust is removed and we have a base coat of paint on there. So I'm gonna let that cure. Like I said, does not look good by any means and I will be the first one here to say that, but the rust is gone uh, and you won't see literally any of this anyway. So it doesn't really matter to be honest. The wing's gonna cover all of that up but i just want to know that the, i just want peace of mind knowing that the rust situation is taken care of but while this dries before we put the clear coat on that uh, i want to try to get started on this so like i said i have never dealt with fiberglass before i've never done any fiberglass stuff so this will be a learning experience for me so i got this stuff the jelly stuff that we talked about the fiberglass cloth. So I have a stencil over here so that way um, I can kind of make the shape that I need. So that way I don't have to do a ton of trimming once this is done, but I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to fiberglass, you guys. So I'm gonna watch like, I'm not even gonna watch a YouTube video. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna try it. Uh, I need to find the mixing ratio for this because there is a hardener that goes with this stuff. Um, and I need a paintbrush. I have to find a paintbrush, hold up. So I guess I just go to town here and I guess I just put some of this in. Oh fuck, oh fuck. Then I put the cream hardener in it. It's all nice and even, one color. I think I'm doing this right, I have no idea. I want to make sure it's got nice strength all the way around there. That's what I'm talking about, baby! Fiberglass! Do I know what I'm doing? Hell no! Were they serious about how quick that stuff hardens? Hell yeah! Oh wow, it's already hard in, dude. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Just went inside and ate dinner for just like 10 minutes or so to let this cure a little bit more. And you guys, it is, it's already getting, it's dry already. That's dope. That's awesome. So that, that's pretty on there. Like that is on there, but I'm gonna let it cure a little bit longer uh, just so we can get the clear coat down on the wing, all the, or on the trunk, not on the wing. So all the paint is pretty much dry at this point. I wanna get the clear coat on there so that can start drying. While that's drying, I'm gonna get the new seals put on the wing or the new gaskets put on the wing. So that way, as soon as that clear coat's dry, that's one less part we have hanging around the garage when we get the wing back on the car. Plus I know a lot of you guys miss the wing. Um, I personally, like the wingless look, I'll probably go wingless at some point. Uh, I've been really eyeballing either the VIS or the Dulux, uh, like carbon fiber little trunk with the little like bloop, duck tail. But that won't be it for a while because that costs a lot of money and uh, we've already spent like way more than I wanted to on this car. But let's get this clear coat on here so that way we can get this wing rebuilt and thrown back on.
I feel like this idea has worked actually pretty well. I don't know, like I said, I have absolutely no idea how to use fiberglass. This is my first time using it, uh, but I was able to shape what I needed because right there we have our wall. So this would be the air would come in through this side, go through here and then come out and go straight into our intake box. Uh, I think this is where I'm gonna stop tonight with this though. So that we'll probably pick this one back up in the next video. Uh, but I just wanna give this ample time to cure. I don't, like I said, I have no idea what I'm doing. So if any of you guys have any experience with fiberglass, please feel free to toss in some ideas down below. Um, what I'm planning to do, and I could be totally wrong on this, and if I am, please let me know. It is Thursday night. You are, you guys are seeing this Friday morning. Uh, I'm gonna kind of smooth all this out and sand all this down, get rid of all the excess fiberglass on here. Once it's all nice and smooth, uh, paint it. I'll probably scuff up this whole thing, paint this whole thing black, and then throw it in the car. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any ideas though, I'm all ears. This is my first time using fiberglass. I don't even know if I did this right. Uh, it's pretty hard and stiff and it's not coming off of this piece. So I think I did it right. I don't know, let me know down below. But I feel like this video has been all over the place today. Um, I am incredibly, 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 incredibly stoked that we got that ticking sorted out in the car. I am so glad that it was just a bad coil pack and it wasn't anything in the head. Head's totally fine. Um, I'm glad that we did pull the motor and we did fix that bucket in there because that still would have been a problem. <coughs> Dude, this fiberglass is like killing me. Literally, probably, probably literally killing me. It did say it'll do liver damage, but uh, I'm so, so happy that we got this situation worked out. Like I said, I do have new, new coil packs on the way. They'll be here Saturday, along with some JDM goodies that I ordered for the car because I do love me some good JDM parts. But, oh, and we didn't even get the wing done today, which kind of sucks too. Um, I did get those studs fiberglassed in. I'll probably do one more layer tomorrow after these cure fully. But anyways, if you guys like the video, if you think we're doing some fun, cool, out of the box, different stuff, because I was excited to do some of this fiberglass stuff because I've never done it before, go ahead and hit the like button. Give me a comment if I'm doing something totally wrong. I'm totally open to criticism. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up one of these corners. You don't want to miss this car going to the dyno because it's almost worked out. We just have to work out, work out our map sensor issue or the barometric pressure sensor. Our Cobb four bar map sensor did ship today. So hopefully we get that here in the next couple days. We can get that thrown on the car and hopefully everything is like hunky dory. If I hear back from Chris down at Surge Line, I'll update you guys on what's going on with the car. But anyways, with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Yeah, I will. So peace out, homies.